Hey, what's up, guys? So there is a lot going on right now. Chat GPT is buzzing, a lot of AI talk. So I wanted to give my take on it from a game dev's perspective and talk about the implications on the creative pursuits such as game dev and art in general, because they are quite staggering. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, let me quickly get you up to speed. So a few weeks ago, OpenAI, a company at the forefront of AI engineering and the creators of the DALI AI art generation tool released an open beta to their chat GPT artificial intelligence interface. And it has absolutely blown people away. It's a sophisticated and at times overconfident chatbot, which understands plain language input. That is to say, you can talk to it as you would a normal person, unlike a search engine where you have to kind of type keyword centric of queries. This you can have a dialogue with and it will give you natural responses. It's absolutely wild. It's a complex neural network that taps into the vast compendium of human knowledge and language, and it learns. It's capable of giving basic answers to simple questions all the way through to exchanging deep philosophical ideas on complex topics. It can write content, it can write scripts, essays, book chapters, and it can mimic the styles of different authors. It can help design games, it can help you write code and organize your architecture. You can essentially ask it to provide you with any info you want in any kind of formatting. To try to list even a fraction of the things it can do would be to do it a disservice. It's quite remarkable indeed. In the short time this chat GPT beta has been available, the platform has grown quicker than that of Facebook. And that is really saying something. This technology is about to disrupt a whole lot of markets and industries and potentially even human culture as we know it. Bit of a Pandora's box because it's such a powerful competitive edge in the right hands. And you cannot do away with competitive edges once they're known to the public. That's it. And if you are a creative in any of the creative disciplines, whether it's content creation, YouTube, game development, game design, um, art creation, then you need to be well aware of this. I've already seen um, notable uh, YouTubers creating complete scripts using this uh, bot system where you say basically like, hey, give me the script for the best YouTube video that has a high chance of being viral, um, you know, on this topic and that topic. But this is only an early version. And I've, I've been told the next version is around the corner, which is supposedly going to be five hundred times more robust. I can't even comprehend what that even looks like. I mean, it's pretty impressive now. So to say something's gonna be magnitudes of order a more um, sophisticated, we're at a bit of a crossroads here. You could say a crossroads for humanity even. I'm predicting within years, we're all gonna be tapped into a form of system like this. This system is basically gonna make conventional websites and blogs and things like that obsolete. Why would you go to Google and you know, make a search query then have to filter through all these different websites, ads popping up in your face and all this stuff when you can just ask this system the question and it will give you the best possible answer based on all the content aggregation available. It's gonna change the way we interact with the online space for sure. And it's a very powerful tool if leveraged correctly. So let's talk about the implications on the creative arts such as indie dev and game dev in general. You see, this system can help you make games. You know, I've joked with friends in the past. Years ago, we would say, you know, like, imagine one day there's a system where you can press a button and it will make a game. <laughs> so we are not there yet, but we are a step closer to that strange reality, dystopian game dev. So ChatGPT can assist you with game design. You know, you can ask it, give me 100 ideas for an indie game in this genre or that genre, and it'll do it for you. It'll give you that information. And then you can say, okay, well, I like this particular idea. Write me a game loop. Design me a level. Give me, give me more info. And it will be as detailed as you ask it to be. So within uh, you know, minutes or, or hours, having a conversation with this system, you can come up with a complete game design document. Now, naturally, uh, you know, you'll need to be a skilled um, 
game designer to know if it's being correct or not. It needs some oversight. However, if you do have those skills, this system can um, benefit you greatly. For your programming, this could be very effective because you can ask it for concepts, design patterns. Say you can, you can ask it, um, well, you know, I have an inventory system that I have this many items. How would I you know, go about designing the architecture for this? And it'll give you a comprehensive breakdown of you know, what are the practices you might want to consider. Very impressive, very impressive. But obviously, um, you know, programming is, is a complex um, discipline that is not so easy to replace. But the system can create basic scripts in various languages. And YouTuber Ben Bonk recently created a video documenting the creation of a minigame purely using the chat GPT-3 outputs. Now, the scripts that were provided were often, you know, uh, problematic with um, strange decisions made. But it was interesting, to say the least. You know, within a year or two years, what does that look like? Nobody knows at this point, you know, nobody knows. And then we have AI art. Artwork is, of course, a big part of game design, concept art, background art, character design. All these things have already been massively impacted by AI-generated art. Um, Stable Diffusion, DALI, Midjourney, just to name a few of the AI generation systems for artwork. Now, I know people who are already using these systems to generate artwork for their games, and it's very impressive. This is good art, exceptional art in some cases. But it's interesting, you know, where does that go? Because it needs artists to um, get the source material from. So if that source material was to dry up, the art would effectively never really change. The, all the AI generated art would kind of start to look the same because it all uses the same um, source material. Now, that might not be so evident now, but over time we would learn to have an eye for what is probably gen AI generated art. And that will affect stylistically, you know, and culturally what um, is considered aesthetic art, you know, as people will try to move away from anything that might resemble AI art. So that's interesting. That would be a big shift in um, human culture because art is such an integral part of human culture. Now you can imagine the implications of uh, this technology for solo indie game developers like myself or people that don't necessarily have an eye for art or aren't trained in art or don't have the budget to hire an artist. It may ultimately determine how your game looks because you know if you're using this tool you have to work within the confines of the results. So here we have an indie developer who has been doing the rounds on various news publications because they built this kind of fairly simple shmup, but it was fully made with AI art. And it's quite impressive what they did. It's not necessarily, you know, award-winning art by any means, but it's coherent and the fact they didn't have to draw any of it is uh, quite remarkable. Very impressive, you know, like they basically bypassed the need for having an artist. So that's a problem for artists, right? Because a lot of people make their livelihood from creating artwork. So here is another case where an AI generated artwork won first place at a fine art state fair in America. And you can see here an AI generated artwork won first place at a state fair uh, fine arts competition and artists are pissed. But I mean, yeah, it looks kind of cool, right? And this probably took them, you know, a few minutes to generate. So I also had a look at what other um, things people were coming up with. This was in the public repository of um, artwork people had generated, different concepts. Each and every one of these images is unique. It's completely unique. And you can keep pressing the refresh button in these systems and it will keep spitting out more and more variations. So concept art is probably going to be hit the hardest by this. So let's jump in and see what we can do quickly. Give me 10 ideas for an RPG video game. Boom. Sure. Look at that. So that's pretty cool. We've got, you know, 10 fairly good ideas. A game set in a world inspired by Norse mythology where the player can choose to be a warrior mage. And you can say, okay, tell me more about nine. And then he will flesh it out even further. Then we might say, what game systems might it have? 
So that there should be more than enough to both amaze and terrify you, depending on which side of this you're on. Now, if you're a skilled game designer, you're going to be like, holy crap. Yep. The market is already so saturated, and now it's going to become a whole lot more saturated. So here is the crazy part. Mid-journey, Dali, you have to give it inputs. So you can now go to ChatGPT3 and ask it to give you inputs that are compatible with those art programs. So you get a full circle of content creation now. But one thing I've noticed with these systems as a game designer myself is that the responses these systems give are a little bit watered down. They're a little bit vague and diluted. They're not really that punchy. They're very generic in a sense. They kind of miss that, that spark, that surprise or mystery. It's very predictable in a way. So this is fine if you're just making like, um, you know, simple stuff. But if you're trying to do something really impactful or meaningful, it may not really work out, although it can still be used as a foundation. And then you can add that surprise and mystery on top. That's what kind of makes art art. You know, it's this, um, there is an essence there, <laughs> rather ineffable, but it's, it's surprise, vulnerability, and the potential for failure. You know, and you take that away, it's not really art, it's artistic, but it's not art as we kind of define uh, culturally. But maybe you can code that in too, right? Maybe you can code in surprise, code in this human essence. We'll see. So how impactful will this technology ultimately be on the market and industry as a whole? Many have already said that this is the equivalent of the Gutenberg printing press revolution, which completely changed the world and how information was disseminated. If everyone has this in their pocket, this is going to essentially change the world. Now, if they put this behind a paywall, which they very well might, you know, I imagine people would pay thousands of dollars a year to have uh, this technology at their disposal because it's such a competitive advantage. There's an ethical way to use this technology and a very um, dubious, underhanded way to use it as well, depending on what you're trying to do. So you can just imagine a lot of um, get-rich-quick schemes already being hatched around this technology. There is a natural inclination to be afraid of these things because it's such a big change. And I myself had an anxiety when I realized the implications of this. After chatting with this system for multiple hours last night, it was like a rabbit hole, man. I just kept on going, oh my God, this thing can... So start thinking about how these technologies can be plugged into your life to make your life more efficient. But I encourage you to try to remain ethical with these things because... There is a dark path potentially before us if enough people use it in the wrong way. You can just imagine how many YouTubers and um, content creators in the video space are going to start using this technology to churn out video scripts and things like that. There is a combination of different sentiments going around at the moment. Some are thrilled. They're like, hey, this is like great. We can leverage this. Others are falling into a state of despair. And understandably, because it's encroaching on your skills and creative space. And I can understand that. However, this technology is not going away. This is only the surface and it's only going to get more widespread and integrated into our uh, markets and life. So look at it as an opportunity. Embrace it and start coming up with ways that you can utilize this technology to um, benefit your life and your creative expression. Use it in tandem with your creativity to elevate it, not to destroy it. That's my advice to you. I had a conversation with a friend who was like, look, the style of art I do is basically at odds, clashing with this stuff. You know, these systems are essentially pulling his artwork from the database and, you know, using it. And he's like, I can't compete with this. You know, these artworks take me weeks to make and all of a sudden people are just making it like that. And you can tweak things on the fly very quickly. You can go into a boardroom with a concept art and the art director will say, oh, you know, can we change the arms or the armor? See, in a conventional setting, the artist would have to go back and spend all day making these changes. But now you can do it in the boardroom.
without leaving, you know, you can just make a bunch of uh, word changes and get a whole new direction. Uh, that's incredible, both a threat and an opportunity. Think of this technology as a personal assistant that will alleviate the bottlenecks in your workflow and let you focus on what it is that you actually enjoy doing, getting rid of all the mundane, boring stuff that you may not actually even be good at, allowing you to really focus on the fun stuff and helping you to bring that finish line a bit closer, faster. I think that's a fair way to look at it. So you don't have to like feel threatened necessarily that this is going to take away the stuff that you enjoy doing. You can continue to do that, you know, but just kind of plug this on and enhance the whole process basically. And that all sounds great, but when you have a low barrier to entry in any field, what you get is people who just want to make money, who have no interest in the craft or creative expression, like all these people making these videos. AI art prints money. Yeah, it's a money printer. You know, sell AI art, $300 a day, make money. Money, 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 money. Okay, and that's where it all falls down. And I'm not at all surprised all these art station um, users holding protests and boycotting AI art, which has been infiltrating their platform. You need to keep it a little bit challenging because you want people to be committed and dedicated to the craft because that yields the best results. One of the reasons I like game dev personally is because it's challenging. I like the challenge. If you take that challenge away, I'm not sure I'll be that interested in game development and I might be inclined to move to a different creative field or discipline. So it's a catch-22. Accessibility is cool up until a point. So you have to kind of balance that out. So these technologies, they can take us over that tipping point where it just opens the floodgates where people are rolling out of bed. It's just going, hey, let's make some money. And that just taints the whole market. So yeah, a bit of a balance is required. Very quickly, you can get a race to the bottom. And we've seen this happen in the mobile app stores, which started out really cool and really innovative, then over time just became governed by corporate interests who started churning out these repetitive games, clash of whatever, something crush. Every thumbnail starts to look the same, some character with his mouth open screaming. It's not great for consumers because they're just getting fed the same old gruel day after day. So I'd love to get a conversation going about this. Let me know down below, what do you think about this technology? Do you think it'll be as disruptive as I have mentioned? Or do you think you know it may take a different path? What do you think about it overall? Are you afraid of it? Um, do you embrace it? Do you think it even should have been created? Is this a good direction for humanity? And where will it take us in you know, 10, 20 years as this thing matures? Because that's where the big question is, right? Right now, it's one thing but you continue down this tra trajectory, where will it be in 50 years? So this is a bold new future we are stepping into. You know, it's a hell of a way to start the new year. So anyways, I hope you've enjoyed um, this video and um, the information. If you have, please do give it a like, drop a sub if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do drop a like. And thanks to all my Patreon supporters. I appreciate you guys so much.